Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Got a real life badass in the show today. You seem you seem weird or gun shy when I said the word badass. You don't consider yourself a badass? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> my, I know my wife doesn't. I'll tell you that. Mike Sorelli. Mine doesn't either. Mike Sorelli is uh, is here with us today. My my wife thinks I'm a fucking idiot. So uh, nothing, they all do. Nothing we can do yeah. about that. Uh, unfortunately. No matter what cool thing we do in this world, it is, it is still like, hey, man, go and take out the trash. Like, don't forget about that. You just stole the words from my mouth. Yeah. Write a book, come home. Hey, great. That's take it. out the trash. Exactly what happened. Yeah. I had a book uh, that came out last week on pre-order, reached number one. She was like, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll go to dinner for it. Uh, as the sun rises, it dawns on him is the name of it. Go to dinner. Um, kids start screaming. And uh, she's like, can you, can you take them home? Can you, can you grab them and take them home? So she could stay with the other one and, and drink. And I was like, yeah, 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 no worries, no worries. No, I'll just go home and, uh, and watch. What, what exactly is there. your expectation? Uh, so, just Six, celebration. Success means that you don't have responsibilities anymore. Yes, for That's, one day. Jocko, one day. Jocko would not like that. <laughs> one day. You, you're supposed to celebrate for one day, I believe. I don't know. Like when you finish your book, you've got a new book out. It's called The Talent War. Um, when you finish your new book, what was the celebration? Because these things are so goddamn hard to write i can't express it enough where people are like oh, i want to write a book and I'm, I'm always like don't don't do it it is so hard man it, it was the first time i put the crayons down and picked up a uh, actual pen yeah uh, but i would rather go back to war another 10 times than uh, than write another book it's crazy right insane um t- tell everybody the process and what what made you want to write this book it's called the talent war um yeah you got a co-author here george randall um, and, uh, and Josh Cotton as well. And you put the PhD on the end. Of we, that. of course you have to have the doctorate just to, to, to <laughs> you know, make it seem official. So no, we, you know, George was a uh, army veteran, uh, Mustang back in the eighties, nineties. He's been in town acquisition for 20 years. I came out of the, uh, the seal teams and I started a foundation to help veterans get jobs that totally failed. Uh, and then we sort of pivoted, uh, Jocko Willink, myself and Leif, uh, took that idea and made it a for profit. And so I placed vets high performing vets into senior leadership positions. And as we're doing this, dude, companies are just bad at hiring. Mm, they just yeah. don't know how to do it. Yeah. And so that blueprint, that book, just takes how special operations forces have over the past half uh, century evolved probably the longest behavioral interview uh, and, and how to implement that into your company and start building teams that way. Right, right. But Google's not going to be able to put you uh, in the wake doing flutter kicks all day, right? So you got to find other ways to test people's metal, I suppose. And, and I'm curious, I haven't read the book yet. Is there anything in there about that? Like a non-kinetic ways to test that kind of shit. So there, there are. We don't get into the means as much as the, uh, the strategy of having the talent mm-hmm. mindset. But yeah, don't, don't take your uh, candidates down to the surf zone. You'll end up in a pretty litigious yeah. uh, situation. Yeah, not a good so idea. It, it's applying the, uh, the pressure in the interview process and having a multivariate process from assessments. And you, there's a lot of things. People just don't know how to interview as well. Right. Like you watch George Randall, mm. he will apply the pressure. So companies sometimes will call us not to hire some of our people, but to run interview processes for them mm. and give us our opinion. And he will bring the pain on them. You're talking 30 year execs mm. who just, he'll, he'll apply the pressure and they can't answer the questions. Right. Um, some of them do, the, the good ones do, but even role play. I mean, you put, and Jocko's a big role play guy. He, he loves it. You, big, just heard, uh, you just found something out about Jocko here, folks. Loves role play. No, not, yeah. not that type yeah. of role play. Yeah. We don't Famous cut it. Shame. Cut it right there. Yep. <laughs> we send don't it out. kink shame. Jocko um, Wilnick loves role play. We started this show just to catch people off guard, cut half of what they say out, leave the rest out, and then make it a fucking headline. Yeah, time. dude. So now your book will be chopped up. When this comes out, it'll say uh, Mike Sorelli, author, wrote a book about Jocko's uh, w- role play yeah. and what he loves we did it to, to Tim. Do. We did it to Tim Kennedy. We yeah. just, we're like, this guy can't stop talking about Hitler. Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. He's obsessed with Hitler. <laughs> I mean, the show is called Finding Hitler, but I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That's so, not our problem. Not our problem. Not just, our problem. We report the news. I, hey, I was, I was duly warned about coming to the show. <laughs> now, now I understand it. Um, Jocko, I love you. Uh, do not fire me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Honey, so get ready to move. <laughs> and, and real quick, speaking of Jocko and all sincerity here, now he wrote he wrote the forward to your book. And before we came on air, you work with Jocko. Um, how did that come about? 
So I was in his task unit as a uh, young SEAL officer. Uh, I came from the Marine Corps. I was a recon Marine on the enlisted side. Um, and uh, bro, you talk about good leaders. He's as good as they come because you know everyone talks a big game. What do we say in Texas? All hat, no cattle. Yeah. Um, he he practices what he preaches. And so then I went on to deploy. Uh, you know another nine times. Um, but uh, you know people have already read the book and they're like, that's the best written part of the book. Like, Thanks. <laughs> Lie Jocko's to me. part. Lie yeah. to me. Yeah. No, they're like, oh, it's, it's pretty much Jocko in this one. Somebody asked me uh, the other day, they're like, well, how do you think this book fares against extreme ownership? And I'm like, that's like asking, uh, how does your son who plays uh, basketball in high school fare against uh, you know, LeBron? Right, I'm right. Like, I didn't know how to respond to that. <laughs> it's different. Here's the thing, man. It's, anybody, can be, anybody in today's society can be famous overnight if they get the right avenue, right? Like, David Goggins is a perfect example going on Rogan, man. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who that was until he went on Joe Rogan. Uh, Jocko, I wasn't familiar with because I'm, I'm, I'm a non-military guy, right? I'm a civilian. Um, but, but he goes on Rogan and crushes and you're like, all right, great. It depends on the opportunities and where you are. Uh, and then you're messaging after it on top of it. Now, clearly what you're writing about is extremely important for today's world and helping getting jobs when you come out. Um, and maybe this show will be the platform for you. Um, for you as a person, why was this so important to write? You know, it, I fundamentally, the, uh, the strongest uh, force in this nation is our economy. Mm -hmm. and, and people don't take that seriously. You know, it is our duty as American citizens to make sure that thing is as strong as possible. Because when it is, we have everything we need in the military. And, and for a vet coming out, if you can't find purpose, you know, a lot, so many vets nowadays say, hey, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know my why. I don't know my purpose. Yeah, you've got one purpose. Get a job. Make the economy stronger. And that's your duty to the next generation of military leaders coming in. And, and why do you think it's so hard to get through people's heads of why they should hire military veterans? Like, I, this is one that I will never understand. In There's a, a lot of years. misconceptions out there, man, honestly. I mean, it's, it's how do you translate uh, intangible skills into tangible skills when we all know from people that have developed if you're, an, if you're a, a sports coach or a, a leader in the military, mm -hmm. you know that someone's resume is far less important than their ability to fucking change on the fly, right? To absorb information, make quick decisions, and then turn that information into good decisions. You know what I mean? That's a t you, can't, you can teach people to do it. It's not true that you can't teach people, but people that can do it under extreme duress are few and far between, and those are the people you want in those like, high-level positions. Yes, or... or in even lower level positions like I, I don't understand that as well like I got my first taste of it on range 15 um, when I directed that that was the first time where most of the people behind the camera were veterans right they didn't have as much experience as, as typical people in Hollywood but the work ethic they outworked any of those lazy assholes like three to one and after that I mean my mind completely changed where I was just like dude if you're not hiring military veterans to do all the shits like uh, you're missing out on, I mean, because it's something you don't have to teach them. You don't have to teach them work, worth ethic whatsoever or what it's like to get up early and work hard and all this stuff. Like, that's already instilled in everybody that comes out of the military. As a civilian, my God, man, that's the first fucking people I would hire over any of these fucking assholes. It was like, eh, my dad did this or I got in this or whatever. And it's like, well, well great. How is that going to help my company? You know? So the book is not exactly you know, uh, an argument for why you should hire veterans. Right. Uh, but as a whole, it, it speaks to you hire for character, you hire for attitude, mm -hmm. you hire for mindset. Industry experience, which is how 99% of companies mm -hmm. hire, is not a predictor of success. It's not. Just because somebody has five years of marketing uh, you know, experience doesn't mean they're good at marketing. If you find somebody with all the right attributes and you train them, like mm -hmm. you just said, yeah. they will outwork, they will outpace those people eventually. And it's frustrating. Um, you know, the systemic challenges with veterans, mm. you know where civilians get this. Because let's be honest, you know, coming out of World War II, pretty much everyone served in the military for the most part. Yeah. And they, had, they understood the value of- They had of, to, yeah. 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 They understood the value of veterans. It's now the 1% versus the 99%. Well, all. I mean, it's, it's 0.45%, actually, you if you want to be specific. <laughs> yes. I think in, I think in uh, World War II, it was like 15.8% to the now 0.45%. Yeah, less wow. of whom have actually deployed to combat zones. Right. So it's a different world now, obviously. So yeah. the 99.5%, uh, <laughs> their perceptions are based off what they see in the movies. Right. Hey, Hollywood is always going to be the best recruiting tool for the yeah, military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also its worst enemy it when is, you yeah. get out. 
that's why shows like SEAL Team are so important. Like they get it all right. They don't church up any of the bullshit. And it's, so, it's one thing to be, to challenge some of those issues and take them on in a network uh, environment is tough when you're murdering people basically, but uh, they, get a, they get a lot right. And all those guys are huge supporters of the military as well. That's why they got to, into the program in the first place. Tyler, like, is a, you know, Tyler. Tyler Gray. Right? He, he's, a, he's a fucking magnet. Yes. He is, yes. a, he is a magnet for good and talented people. I don't know what it is about him that makes that happen. Maybe he's Jesus. It's hard to say. <laughs> but it seems like people, first of all, he's one of the hardest working human beings I've ever met in my life, but he's also brilliant and an operator. So it's people flock to him to be able to express shit like that. And I talk to people, I, I've been on set a couple of times. I talk to the people that work on that show that have been in Hollywood for years, and they, they don't talk about vets the same way that other people out there do. There's, there's something different about the way they speak. And you can tell that it's just experience, right? Like, that's all it is. It's experience one-on-one -on -one with a human being. It's the reason nobody hates gay people anymore. Everybody was afraid of gay people 15 years ago. And right. then like, oh, everybody's gay. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no one, one cares. No one, now no one cares anymore. And I, there is some reticence on behalf of the general public to deal with, with veterans, just to deal with them in general, right? And we're also really bad at asking for help when we need it too. So... All these things come together, and you, the, the result, unfortunately, very often is some dude alone in his apartment with a fucking gun yeah. in his hand. You know what I mean? That's a too, uh, too common standard here, and it's, it, it is what it is. I mean, we have to educate at the end of the day, and that's what this book does. We were lucky mm. to have served in a tribe, really some of the last tribes that exist in the U.S., and when you leave an environment where all you knew was team and esprit de corps, it's hard to come back, especially when you see the leadership in the national capital region, mm -hmm. where we expect our leadership to be the best and we get the exact opposite and they can't even work with it, you know, together with some civility. We, and you come back from a military environment and you're like, what the hell is going it's on? It's very disappointing. We've got the best military that you could possibly have. We have the best idea, the best fundamental idea that any country is based on. And I think it's two parts. One is individual liberty, and the other part is what MLK said. You have two hands for a reason, one to pull yourself up and one to pull the next guy up with you. Those are the two fundamental, fundamental guiding principles of most Americans' lives, I hope. But somehow we end up every single year with the shittiest possible leaders. Like, what, what does it say about American culture that we're not able to put people in power? I think maybe the presumption that everybody's on the same page is a dangerous presumption because clearly there's a lot of fucking uh, snakes out there. And we've, we've put that part of our brain on hold because our lives are busy. But it might be time to start paying a little bit of attention to what's going on in politics again. Not just fucking re-sharing stupid shit on Facebook, but actually pay attention to who's saying what, how full of shit both of these parties are, and how they're basically just fucking using you to get what they want. I think it's really important for people to fucking turn inward and start looking at themselves and how they've allowed this shit to happen because we have to prevent it from continuing. We have to stop it in its tracks. We have to prevent it from happening again as well. Like we're, we're not learning a lot of lessons right now. Everybody's just butthurt. It's fucking stupid. If you don't take an interest in politics, politics will assuredly take an interest in you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are now seeing that. And the, the amount of people that don't get out and vote is, I don't, I don't know if I want to say disgusting, but you know, that is your civic duty to get out there and vote. And you know, I think people are going to wake up and they're going to start uh, getting a lot more involved. And quite frankly, veterans, Mm -hmm. We need more veterans like Dan Crenshaw right. uh, in there uh, with, you know, Dan has shown the ability to, to reach across the aisle and have a civil conversation. Yeah. That guy is definitely the candidate for 2024. I, I, I don't doubt that one bit. Maybe. You're probably right. As, as long Maybe. as his own party in their, uh, yeah, that's the, in, they're, in, they're, their, exactly. in their fucking deep butthurt state that they're in right now. We don't even know if this is over yet, by the way, but in their deep butthurt state, they're going to lash out at anybody that gives anything tw towards the middle. And that, is the fucking dumbest shit of all time. If you want to make yourself truly irrelevant, become the Tea Party. Start to shout, thou shalt not, or, uh, shall not infringe over and over until your ears bleed and everybody's like, all right, well, we don't have to listen to that idiot anymore. Right. If, if you think you can go play this game, whatever this game is, without negotiating and taking other people's, it's not about giving up ground. It's about taking other people's lives and, and, and circumstances into fucking... Uh, mind when you're making decisions. That's a good. That's a trait of a good human being to do that. By the way, it doesn't. It doesn't make you weak to consider the feelings and plight of other people. 
how, how, how could that possibly be true? Because the strongest people we know take that thing into consideration and go fight and die for it. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. But somehow we've applied that politically where, you know, it's, it's somehow perceived as a weakness or disloyal to agree with a fact. Like, no, dude, this is information. This is ones and zeros. You're just get out of here with that stuff. But we can't do it. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't either. And, and speaking of politics, do you, did you feel like you had a political hangover today when you got up and started the day? Like, because now, it, look, it's, it's Monday. We're recording this on Monday. You wake up, you, you, you walk the streets, you get to talk to people or see people's expressions. Uh, what's your feeling today? Well, so my wife and I were downtown uh, on Saturday, shortly after they made the, uh, the, uh, the announcement. And people were driving around honking mm -hmm. and, and great. You know, I understand that they're happy for the, their, their side, but the biggest realization for me, and one, I, I feel like something's coming. The Republicans are, 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 are like laying in wait, but they've got some. There's, there's just this eerie feeling. But my whole takeaway from this is one, people need to be just so less polarized and so less emotional. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that's mainly the left. But federal government has become way too freaking big. And that's what needs to change. And it needs to be pushed down to the state and local level, as it was always intended. And it will put less emphasis on federal government if we end up doing that. Oh, you mean like the 10th Amendment says to you? Yeah. I mean, it was one of the Bill of Goddamn Rights. Maybe we should take it seriously. Or we just do whatever. Who cares? If the Liber Libertarian Party wasn't so messed up, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> the ideas haven't been fleshed out. They're too, they're too young. Their yeah. economic policies are nonsense. And no, because of that, nobody's going to take them seriously. You have to have something that is applicable, applicable and scalable, not just a good idea. To, it's, we're in 2020 now. You can't just say, like, you know what would be great is if this. I'm like, yeah, it would be great, but that's not fucking reality, dude. You also need a popular candidate. Well, um, yeah, I mean. That look, will go out there, and, yeah. and you've got to, somebody's got to turn the tide. Because yeah, right, who, right now. Who is their PR person? Because I didn't see Joe Jorgensen on any news station ever. Like, I know she made appearances here and there, but. It, you, you, you need, if you're even gonna, here, if, man, if you're trying to start a new party, you have to have like a good 30, 40 people all saying the same exact shit all at the same time and being able to defend those points as well. Like we believe this because of this challenge me on that. Maybe I can, I can flex on it a little bit, but here's why we believe what we believe. What do you guys believe? Oh, well, here's why what you're thinking right now isn't, is, is right technically, but in application, it won't work. Right. And here's, here's the last 40 years of proof of that. Now let's try something different. But no, it's not that. It's just like, thou shalt not infringe. And yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking fuck the two-party system. I mean, that doesn't really tell me anything. I need information with which to make a decision. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but you're not going to get it. frustrating. No, yeah, probably not. You're not going to get it. And, and even with Joe Jorgensen, we had uh, her VP uh, candidate on the show, Spike Cohen. Um, and the, the promise initially was, hey, man, Joe Jorgensen is going to come on next week or whatever. And no was, kidding. It, it, she didn't end up coming on the show. Um, <laughs> Probably you because I lit him up a little bit for saying dumb shit. But. Either way, man, you don't turn down 10.3 million listeners, right? I, you try to get your message out there despite whatever it is because it's hard to go out to an audience of this size um, anywhere right now. Uh, you wouldn't get it on Jimmy Fallon if you're going on Jimmy Fallon. No. Uh, so no matter if, if people are going to challenge you or not, you still want to get your message out to the listeners. And I also think, again, you need a candidate in that party who is popular enough to say, all right, we're going to start voting for this. We're going to start taking this party seriously, regardless if it takes votes away from one or the other. Because I think that's always been one of the biggest arguments, right? Is somebody's been afraid to run down the middle with the Ross Perot thing where, shit, that's going to take votes from this other candidate. You, you, you have to stop being afraid of that. Um, yes, you're going to take votes from another candidate, but to, in order to establish a serious third party, someone's got to start it and, and it's got to be serious um and, and there's got to be some financial backing because they didn't have that much money there no ross pro just paid for himself yes and that's why i said like i've been criticized for this before but i think bloomberg should have run as an independent i think that bernie sanders should have run as an independent i think mitt romney should probably have run as an independent because he represents a different wing of the republican party mm -hmm. look this isn't about a versus b this is about what the fuck is best for my goddamn country right what is all this that's happening right now that made this worth all the fucking blood that's been shed to make this happen. Look, we had this idea that individual liberty is really important and we think we can govern our entire lives around it and we sent men to battle for it. 
for years, over and over, one major war every 20 years in the history of this country to, to support that fucking idea. Show me where the fucking value is in that now. Like, show me what fucking reverence is being given back to that fucking promise and that, and that uh, sacrifice just so you can spit in a cop's face and complain about fascism in a country that has never seen fascism. Let's right, be real. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know that anything in American politics can be fixed with voting at this point. Honestly, I don't think, I don't think it can. Until people change the way they think about what is right and what is wrong. Right is not correct, and left is not correct. Correct is correct, bitch. Right. The idea that you would say, well, that's a Republican talking point. Anything that's a talking point to me is bullshit. I don't want to hear that. Prove it, then I'll believe it. This is not God. It, it, it's 2020. I have all the information in the world on this little device right here, mm -hmm. and somehow we can't figure out how to agree on fucking reality. Uh, and it's not coming anytime soon. Um, is it because... We don't have those old tribal lines anymore because of globalism. Like we don't, I can't just like dislike the other country and take care of mine because I have to like everybody now. Is that it? Is that really what it is? I mean, are we that fucking pathetic? To your point about, you know, all the bloodshed, it's an afterthought in people's minds. If, if it's even there at all. Uh, I mean, it, there's a sense of entitlement in America that Americans are almost entitled force soldiers going forward mm. overseas and giving their lives and they're going to tune into the kardashians or whatever uh you know uh, tv show is uh, is popular so this will be the first uh, of many years on november 11th i usually go to ottawa to celebrate with some canadian uh jtf2 guys their, their version of special operations mm -hmm. and i've never seen a country like the U. well let's say the united kingdom celebrate a holiday like that americans don't celebrate uh, Veterans Day anywhere close to what Canada and, and Britain do. Everyone stops. Every town has a memorial. Mm. Everyone's wearing a red poppy. You've never seen such unity. And that's why and I, it's sad to say that I served 20 years and, and every 11 November, I, I do my best to make it to, uh, to Canada. Really? Yeah. No shit. Yes. <laughs> this will be the first year because uh, one, the, mm. the COVID restrictions and yeah, yeah. Uh, two, with the launch of the book. Yeah. But yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, me personally, uh, as far as political hangover goes today, um, I typically watch the, the, there's a today show or something on in the morning as I'm getting ready, uh, for work just to kind of catch up on the news. Uh, this was the first day that it wasn't dominated by madness over Trump and oh, anger over Trump and everything else. They almost didn't know what to talk about. Uh, on the news, you know, um, there was a, a couple things of like, hey, there was a this celebration of Biden and Harris and blah, blah, blah. But uh, they seem lost when they couldn't talk about anything <laughs> regarding Trump. And we well, already know what they're going to talk about for the next four yeah. years, right? Like, then, no, then, I, that's I, I was trying to guess that earlier on Ross Patterson Revolution. What is it? What are they going to talk pro about? Provided things stay as they are with these counts, uh, what they're going to talk about is how the Republicans are trying to prosecute Biden for the Russia bullshit, which is hilarious, by the way. I mean, it's, uh, it's, for Hunter Biden's thing or for something for the, different? For no, for that, but okay. his involvement in it, which we know he had some. Don't don't be naive. Let's let's just be adults here. For yeah, the minute. big guy is but taking ten percent. We'll, is, we'll is, see is about all that. Biden, we but. will see. It probably is. I mean, it, it it definitely passes the smell test, and we know that those emails are are legit now. Right. Not not necessarily. We don't know that Biden's the big guy necessarily. But we know those emails are legit. Anyways. Uh, we'll hear about that because the Republicans are going to try to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also going to uh, probably win the House in the midterm. The Re Republicans probably will. In 2022. Because, yeah, yeah, because there's, things are too tumultuous right now for Biden to maintain like a positive feel. There's going to be a lot of war going on within the Democratic Party. There already is. AOC is sniping at everybody right now. Antifa just burned down the goddamn Portland DNC headquarters and wrote a bunch of profane shit with Biden's name on it. Why? He wasn't. Who the fuck knows, dude? He wasn't progressive they, enough. They let the inmates run, run the, the asylum. Yeah, yeah. the Democrat Party present. will fracture. Yeah, it's going to fracture. So they're going to be in, in 2022. The Republicans will win back the House, and it's fucking bulls on parade at that point, right? Right. They're going to be lighting him up with on everything they can for the next two years, and then CNN and MSNBC will be defending Biden mm. the same way that Fox has been defending Trump, except for when they haven't, right? 
over the last, it's it's nonsense yeah this is I, all I, this is like a play it's like uh it's it's kind of like plinko Remember that game? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. From uh, yeah. what is it called? Uh, Price is Price right. Is they right. now yeah. sell it for a home version, by yeah. the way, if you're curious. They do. It's like Plinko, except for there's no question which line it's going to go down. <laughs> like it may vary a little bit, but it's going to go down in one general area. You know it every single time. This is, we're, we're fucking dummies. We're in the best country that could possibly exist, right? Right. Because of our geographical standoff, because of the idea that we built the country on individual liberty, we have the best opportunity in this country to stave off any kind of attack while also flourishing as much as a, as, as a culture can. But you know what we do? Nothing. We're idiots. We, we start to see some success. You know, like, I deserve this. Like, if, you're, if you achieve something, it, there's a reason why all these dum-dums, when they win awards, get up on stage and be like, I just like to thank everybody involved in this. Not because they really believe it, because they probably don't. Let's be real. But that is exactly how your brain should work. Your brain should, once you accomplish something, even the smallest thing during the day, like, oh, fuck it, yeah, that was great. Start thinking about what allowed you the opportunity to do that stuff. Not because you didn't work hard. It's not because of that. It's because everybody's fucking working hard. It doesn't right. make you special to work hard, okay? That makes you doing the bare minimum, frankly. So, yeah, I did this great thing at work today. You know what was really great is when I didn't have to worry about shit at home because my wife had already taken care of it or whatever the case is, right? That's a big fucking mental leap to make as a human being. And if you can start to implement shit like that in your real life, I think you'd be a lot goddamn happier. Like, I, I work on that. It's easy to talk about. It's very difficult to do that shit in real time because you're so much in your own head that you don't think about it at the time, and then 10 minutes later, you're like, fuck, I should have said this. Yeah. Right? I, I'm, I'm lucky because I think, for me personally, at least in my relationship and my home life, um, I enjoy my wife and I enjoy my children um, a lot. So when I go home, I, I don't have an issue of like, holy shit, I've got to fire on the news or get angry about anything. Like, I don't because I actually love my family and it's real, right? Uh, I know a lot of people who don't. I'm not one of them, fortunately, so I don't have those issues and problems. But uh, everybody else who is, I think they use politics and everything else as a crutch of like, well, this is why my yeah. life sucks and everything else. Yeah, it's, and it's, not, like, it's not hard to take a no, couple minutes not. out of your day and think about what you should be grateful for. Yeah. And yeah. then maybe if it's people go show some gratitude. It's not, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do either one of those things. It's something that I'm a dude that lives in my own head quite a bit. I'm heady, which is an annoying thing to say, but it's true. I fucking sit around and just stare at shit and think for 45 minutes and people think I'm nuts, right? Or I walk around like people aren't standing around me sometimes, even if it's at my own home. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's off-putting to people. Like you can't just act like that now. So I know I'm heady and shit. I think about this stuff a lot, but it does trap me up. Like I get caught in that moment where I'm just like, hmm, let me think about everything that's going on right now. Like, no, you should, I gotta, you gotta train yourself, right? Yeah. 21 days it takes to, to train something into your daily routine that will last forever. 21 days, typically speaking for a normal person. So it's not that hard to do. It's just a matter of effort, right? And strategy. I think we're all failing at it. Like pretty much everybody I know fails at this shit. Like how do we, how do we enjoy what's happening in real time instead of being nostalgic later because this is the only time we've got this this resource of time is the only one that we can't replace I, and i'll say this I, that is the only thing that i have figured out in this life and i figured it out at a very very early age that time um was the most valuable thing that we have so i i consider myself good at that but bad at other things um i don't know about you you i'm not going to give bandwidth to things i can't change mm. or effect uh, i'm just over it and at the end of the day you know jocko said this he's like you know people get so worked up that trump's getting elected well he maybe moves the azimuth like two degrees to the right biden gets elected yeah maybe four degrees to the left but we're still moving in the same general direction yeah. it, it's like i've got friends because i went to ut uh that when they lose a game it's like their whole week is destroyed well they've had a rough couple of weeks though. uh they've had a, they've had a rough 15 years shrug your shoulders you're not on the field you're an alumni just just move on with your uh your your, your day your that's week. one thing i'm bad about i'll admit that you're yeah. really? terrible uh, dude i went to ohio state so i'm fucking terrible well you it. guys usually dominate i know so, yeah but, but, but when we don't loss? dominate yeah. that will that will eat away at me forever and like that's something i'm terrible at and i'll fully admit that i wonder what what the what are we getting out of that exactly? Like, I'm a fan of various sports teams. What, mm -hmm. do, what do I personally get out of them winning? Uh, so me, me personally. And I, I ask that, by the way, yeah. because what do I lose when they lose? Right. And is, is it is that commensurate, right? Because I don't actually lose anything. 
Well, you maybe you was, you was a person, yeah. But maybe yeah. maybe I gained some endorphin, <laughs> you know, being being shot out of my brain. Yeah, for some period of time, and maybe that makes me happier. But there's probably other ways to accomplish that that I don't get so emotionally invested in and shit I can't control. I guess maybe it's to your point, right? Like there's stuff that I can do to have that endorphin release. For example, cocaine. <laughs> I was just, I was just, <laughs> I was literally just. I know say. you were waiting for me to stop so you can say cocaine, and it's the reason you were gonna say it is because it's fucking true. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine and MDMA, and you can have that same endorphin release without giving a shit what happens on Saturday. As a matter of fact, you probably won't be awake for the game. You'll have been be, out all Friday night. You'll be too too awake for the game. Or, or too um, awake. Well, I mean, if you stayed up all night the night prior was my my joke there. Yeah. So here is like I I don't do cocaine, therefore I I have to to live on sports or something. So that's, but it's that's a drug, it right? I mean, like you, to his point, that, the reason I went on that whole fucking soliloquy there <laughs> is because to his point, we give so much power over our our daily mood to shit that we literally can't control. How stupid is that? That's like handing a fucking loaded gun to, some, to a crazy person. And just like, all right, we'll see what happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you literally have no control over whether or not Ohio State wins. You also have no control over the vast majority of the shit that happens to you in life. What do you have control over, though? It's the real question. And I'm not asking rhetorically. I want to know what you think about that. Time. I, it, to me, it's time. Um, I don't know what it is to you, but uh, time. And I've always been very in, uh, My wife always says I'm impatient. And then I will try to, oh, I got to get through this line or I got to get through this or whatever it's because my time is so valuable. And I realize that you, you can't, that is the one thing you just cannot get back. That, that's why I'm impatient. That, it's not the other stuff of I just don't want to wait in line or I just don't want to do this. I just value my time that much. Um, I don't know what yours is. I think that's why I'm so respectful of people's time and I won't ask for a lot of help because I, I don't want to take up their time. Right. Um, yeah. I, my time is, is very important to me. Um, and sometimes I can be a little brutal about it. Uh, you know, same, same. <laughs> he, like, don't, don't waste my time because I'm not going to waste yours. But let me put it to, to you in the context. And, you know, leaving after 20 years uh, between, you know, the recon community and then the SEAL community mm -hmm. and JSOC, bro, I lost a, a lot of brothers. Mm -hmm. And I, like, just dominated my life for like three years during the transition. And there's, the, you know, thinking have, about them, thinking, thinking about, about the them, loss. thinking about everything, think, thinking about how the war was fought and how I just totally disagree with the evolution of that mm. war. And, I mean, it was mission creep. It was Vietnam oh. 2.0, man. Come on. It, in the fact that there are still young 18 year olds in Afghanistan. Yeah. Like just, it gets me. But there was a point to where, <laughs> and this is why, like, dude, at least the military guys I'm around, I've got a strong core of like SEALs run. Uh, there's like four of us. We're boys. We just don't talk about the military stuff anymore. Because right. we don't want it to eat any more of our bandwidth. Mm. We all gave 20 for it. We're done. We're pushing it behind. And our job is to live now for the guys that didn't come, come home, live in their absence and live in their memory. But that's sort of, you know, when you're asking to contextualize it, that's mm -hmm. immediately what jumps into my, my mind. Let me, let me ask you, you guys this question, uh, because you're, you both seem to be around the same age uh, and you both served and you mm. were both overseas. Looking back at it now, right, all these years later, would you have gone back if you could have, you know, talked to yourself at that age when you entered, uh, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. would you have done it, both of you? Yes. Same with you? Yeah. Yeah? But because the guys were going to go. Yeah. If the guys were going to go, I was going to be there with them. And, and quite frankly, you joined, and I'm sure it was the same for you, mm -hmm. you joined because you love your country. Right. And, you know, the only thing necessary for evil is for good men to stand by and do nothing. We yeah. all know that quote. Mm -hmm. But it becomes less about the United States because you, you get older, you, you see that, uh, I hate to say it, that the civilian populace is not as grateful as, as they should be. Sure. Um, and I don't need that pat on the back. I don't, but for my guys, I wanted them to be respected. And the remainder of your deployments come about, it's just about the guys and the team. So the anger then, is your anger once you got out and you think about, uh, you said Vietnam 2.0, is it towards the government then of like, Hey guys, why the fuck did you have this figured out before you sent us over there? I would say more so than anybody that was a member of the government at that time, the generals, and I said this a couple of weeks ago too, these motherfuckers knew, man. They knew, they, they were fucking Vietnam survivors, if you want to call it that. All these general officers that were around, they knew this is bullshit. They knew the thing with Iraq at least was bullshit. With Afghanistan, that's a strategical move I thought was inappropriate, but it is what it is. Um, that's just mission creep. That shit happens. But with Iraq, that was all nonsense. That was a Dick Cheney. That's mm -hmm. all that was. Dick Cheney's trying to get rich. That's all it is. Or he had some fucking thing against 
Saddam Hussein uh, or, or whatever the fuck, right? I mean, he, it's funny how Cheney and, uh, and that other turd that was the sec def under Bush, what's his name? Um, I could see a stupid face in my head. He was a congressman before. Anyways, uh, Rumsfeld. Rums- um, Donald Rumsfeld, yeah. Yeah, he, those guys, you can see them shaking hands with, uh, with Saddam back in the day, you know, when we were selling them weapons and mm-hmm. shit. All of a sudden now they're against him because of what changed between the mid 80s and the early 2000s with Iraq exactly? What changed? Nothing is the answer. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's anger to be spread around, but I think the generals bear the, the, the biggest part of that burden uh, because they had the authority. They, I mean, look, it's different in 2020 than it was in 2000, right? So generals back then wouldn't have jumped on Twitter and be like, hey, this guy's an asshole. We shouldn't be deploying or whatever the fuck. Maybe that's a good thing that they didn't do that. But they were the most authoritative people on something that they knew would become mission creep. Like, we're just going to go in and stabilize. And like, anytime, any, any, anytime anybody during a military operation says, we're just going to dot, 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 go ahead and fucking set your shit on fire because you're not coming back. You know what I mean? It's, it's the dumbest shit of all time. But I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm really angry. Just dis, it's more disappointment than anger. Like, you can't be angry for that long. Um, that's good because I, I, I look obviously we have a bunch of friends who are in the military um between us and uh there is some some people who are just pissed just angry of like man i i did not i thought i was doing something that uh i was yeah. lied about i mean i think that anger is lied to. is often an effigy for all like that that when when you hear veterans bitching about shit it's usually uh, a redirection it's an effigy of what's really going wrong with them and here there's a number of different things going wrong with them one They've lost their support system, which is difficult, like he was saying. Two is that any kind of threat at all seems to me like something I need to be on my toes for. And it's like a dog, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you, if you and, and Jesse had a dog and you were walking it, the dog is going to be pretty calm. If Jesse walks that dog and anybody comes near, that dog is immediately going to get protective. And for us, the first thing that happens to me when I feel danger is I get fucking pissed off. Like I get as angry as I've ever been in my life for a very brief period of time. And then my, I get tunnel vision. I start looking for shit to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's a common thing for people that have been trained to do that all the time. It's difficult to turn that off. I don't know if you ever really turn it off completely because even when you get back here, like we realize as pragmatists, as people who have walked through extremely dangerous situations and gotten so comfortable with that that oftentimes we ignored some of those dangerous situations, moving back here and doing all this stuff, a lot of stuff like, Peaks my interest that will never peak yours. Like the way somebody's holding their hands, or any, and there's all kinds of fucking examples of it. But it becomes problematic in your life. You can't keep doing that, so you got to find a different outlet for it. You have to fucking find some kind of purpose, and I'm working on that now. Still, after ten years of this shit, find some kind of purpose that, instead of my heightened level of awareness coming off as angry, like I'm doing something positive with that shit. Right. Because otherwise, it'll fucking eat you alive always so i don't want to be fucking mad all the time i don't want any of that bullshit yeah and and mike you're doing something positive as well uh with this book um i I know you're a busy man and and you're on a tour right now uh tell everybody where they can find your book and uh and where they can grab it i know covid's different now because you used to be able to like yeah go to barnes and noble or things like that like um it almost feels safer to just say hey man just go to amazon and if you want to give us a really quick synopsis of what it is exactly yes yeah it's 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 about a talent mindset which is the strongest tool you can have to dominate whatever the hell you do Mm. it's recognizing that your people are the most strategic competitive advantage you will ever achieve human and can maintain exactly Mm -hmm. it's not your systems it's not your technology it's always been and always will be people and the military has always understood that and it doesn't matter if you have seven people that go up against 100. If you have seven people that are better than those 100, they will wipe them out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you can check out The Talent War. Uh, it is out now. Um, Amazon, right? Amazon. Am- and where books no. are sold. Is there an yeah. audio book for that yet? There is. And again, the best part of it is the uh, introduction by Jocko. Did he do his own intro? He, d- he did. And then I, I, you know, I tried to do a, a mix between Leif Babin and uh, Jocko, and mm. it just didn't come off as uh, genuine. Did so. you do it? Did you do your so own did. audiobook? Good. You that, have to. Hey, you that was to. the hardest thing I've ever done. No. I went home at 4 p.m. <laughs> and I looked at my wife and I said, just let me go to sleep. Yeah. It, using different bandwidths, yeah. I was spent. We, it's we, crazy, We, we recorded it? his last audiobook. What was that in fucking July? July. Yeah. 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 In L.A. It it's, was brutal. 
brutal, man. And it's, it's I, how long? How many days was yours? Uh, two. And then my co-author was another two. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, th- those it's usually about four days, and you're cramming in like fifty pages a day. And what people don't understand is that every time you mispronounce something, you have to stop and go back. And it's like the word the or something yeah, here yes. and there. But if it's a fluid sentence, you have to read the entire sentence. Yes. If it's a fluid yep. paragraph, yes. you have to read the whole goddamn paragraph again. So that, that experience alone, well, I think would prevent me from ever writing a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Where you're just like, dude, I got to read the fucking audio. You just got to hire done. the British guy next time and he'll do oh, it yeah. for you. Oh, yeah. 80%. Don't, Which is don't. like all the novels my, yeah. my, my wife listens to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I will say this. It, because when you're writing a book, um, it, it should come from you. Therefore, every author who's out there who's, who's thinking about writing a book, read it yourself. People want to yeah. hear from you. Unless you're uh, Kamala Harris. Nobody wants to hear her voice. No. Like, I've seen more memes from lefty people about the way she speaks. They fucking hate her. Holy oh, shit, I, dude. It, it's, it's an unlikable candidate. And I, look, I, so they, but they hate her a little less than they hated Trump, I guess. Right? Yeah, a little bit. Which is weird. A little bit. We'll see. You know, we'll yeah, still, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it picks up. Um, speaking of which, uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, after we get to the sponsors, and I believe Dakota Meyer is going to join yep. us here. Uh, with that, Mike, we greatly appreciate you being on the show, my oh, man. Dude, fellas, thanks for having me. Yeah, Thank you for your time today. You're, you're a great dude, and uh, I look forward to reading The Talent War, which is available everywhere. Uh, go to Amazon. It's the easiest. You'll get it in two days for free with Amazon Prime. We got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros has the best mattresses in the land. If you're a member of the military, a first responder, a teacher, or work in the government, you get 30% off for life. That's every item in the store that is pillows, sheets, mattresses, adjustable bases, you name it, you get a 30% off. The rest of us dummies are relegated to a 25% off deal. Uh, but when you buy a mattress, you get two free pillows, and I can promise you, uh, the pillows are just as great as the goddamn mattress. Like $140 savings, too. Um, I will say this. Uh, hate to tip my hand here, but they're going to have a monster Black Friday sale. Uh, it's going to be how monstrous is the size of that guy's dick that you always get texted. It's going to be that big. Huge. Uh, Black Friday sales, so get ready for that. And as always, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, they've got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program, no interest there. And all of the deals I just mentioned are applicable with that. So that means you're getting that shit for like $38. Uh, Dakota, welcome. Uh, Next up, we got uh, tryfirstleaf.com forward slash drinking bros. That wine club, D'Anthony. Yeah, I like wine. Yeah, big fan. Pretty much it. Pretty much. For, uh, look, there's two things that you <laughs> like that the in, in, I don't this, know. in this life. It is. Mm. You like drugs and you like wine. Well, I like more than that. I like steaks as well. But What about me? No. No. Uh, <laughs> I do definitely like wine. I, it's, 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 I had the benefit, I guess, if you want to, if these days, you definitely can't call it that. But if you could ever call, the, call living in the Bay Area the, a, a benefit of, in any way, it was because I could go to wine country whenever I wanted to. True. Right? True. And... It's very diverse. Mm-hmm. Like grapes are very diverse. They taste different to me. Yeah. So it's, it's, I enjoy it. So if you're a wine connoisseur or if you just like it or you're trying to get into it or whatever it is, or if you just want good wine, this is a good, really good place to go. It is. You get six like for, bottles for $30. Right. For any level that you, if for a wine club, for any level of experience with wine you have, they, you, you can answer questions about random bullshit and they can tell you kind of what your flavor palette is. But if you have more precise information, you could do that as well. Mm-hmm. And then it graduates. So every new, uh, every new wine shipment you get should be closer to your own particular taste, mm-hmm. which is good, right? That's how it should yeah. work, particularly for people who have never used it before. Right. That's the best way to get into something like that. It's like having your own fucking wine butler, basically. It's amazing. Uh, so they'll send you the six bottles. You try them out. You let them know if you like them, and then uh, you can continue on like that. In the meantime, again, how are you going to turn down six bottles for $30? I mean, Regardless of what your situation is. Insane. That's it's the holidays idea. too, dude. Yeah. And it's, all, it's also like curated wines as well. Yeah. These aren't like two buck chucks. These are, I guarantee you, these, these, every single bottle in your fucking kit is going to be worth more than $5 per, which is basically what you're paying. I, dude, I, the, last, the last one I had, there wasn't a bad wine in the bunch, man. And mm-hmm. um, my wife and I are huge fans. Go mm-hmm. to tryfirstleaf.com forward slash drinking bros. That's tryfirstleaf.com forward slash drinking bros. If nothing else, Thanksgiving and Christmas is upon us. Um, 
six bottles for $30, you, you really can't beat it. Uh, so you might as well load up for the holidays because Lord knows you're going to need it, especially if your family is on two different sides of the political aisle. Uh, well, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that, Dakota. No, I really, like, I don't, I don't I'll, I'll probably just be spending Christmas without family. You know what I mean? I don't have my girls this year, so it's going to be peaceful. It's going to be nice, but mm. I'll... I'll get that wine, put it under the Christmas tree, mm. forget that I got it. <laughs> and then when I open it up, I'll get drunk. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Are you back on the booze? You drinking these days? You know, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm not, not like I used to, but I'll, I'll have a few drinks here and there, you know? Okay. I'll have a couple here, a couple there. Proud of you. Yeah. I had mm. a bunch this weekend, man, after this, uh, yeah. this election. Um, I don't. Dan and I have shied away from the beers, obviously, as you, as you hit your early 30s. Yeah, um, you'll look like me. <laughs> yeah. Right, Dan? I'll never get there. It's yeah. a, lot of, uh, a lot of seltzers these days. Mm. But this one, I was like, you know what? I'm going all in. I was at uh, Twisted X Brewery and, um, oh. yesterday. What you, what'd yeah, you, some what, neighbors what were you last hammering night. down? Uh, the, the big dogs. They got yeah. uh, some APVs that are um, 8% last night. Yeah. I think is what it was called. Um, they've I got just, the McConaughey's. They're they're famous for that one. They're I just don't Twisted like X. like, I just don't like um, how bloated I feel for like two days afterwards. Like how fat I feel. I just feel so. Fat. I, that's the way I feel today. Yeah, that's the way I feel today. But yeah. I I also knew it. Right, I was yeah. going into the weekend and I was like, all right, cool. You got the mindset. Yeah, because I didn't find out. Dan and I, I collectively, somebody tallied it up. We did fifty eight hours worth of podcasts in the last two weeks. I, I slept, mo I was pretty sick, like, it was Saturday, my body yeah. just gave out, I was pretty sick, um, and I slept most of the fucking weekend, man, um, you know, and I didn't find out about the, the election until, I, I think, like, 6.30 that night, uh, Saturday night, when I woke up, and I was like, oh, shit, they had actually called this, um, you know, Mike was talking about it a, a little bit earlier here, um, what was your reaction to it, uh, you think it's real? Uh, what, which part? Uh, the like the the mail-in balloting and um. I mean, look, I think it, it's over, right? I mean, look, the election's over. Th this one's over. Like it's. I, I just hope that the Republicans don't make the same uh, mistake that I feel like the Democrats did over the last four years and just try to fight out mistakes. And I hope this isn't their their tagline, like Russia was right. uh, for the last four years. I, I hope that you know, look, I, I do think we need to do do justice to make sure that you know that the system was you know that that it was fair. Mm. But at the end of the day, like, okay, hey, we lost. We just need to say it. Okay, we lost. We got, we got beat. Right. Um, we're going back to the drawing board. Like, let's don't, make, let's don't play the victim card over the next four years, right? Like, well, that kind of begs the question of what is the point of all this, right? Is the point for your team to win or is the point for America to win? And it's why I challenge the binary political system itself. We've turned... Republican talking points versus left talking or uh, liberal talking mm -hmm. points into win versus lose or win versus lose, depending on how you see the world, right? That's ridiculous. Well, There's, there are right and wrong answers to questions, and we've somehow man managed to pigeonhole ourselves into one of two choices. And every fucking year, people complain about it. Can you believe we got to choose between these two assholes again? It's because of you. Yeah. Every bit of it is because of you. It's yeah. because of you, you, yeah. me, every, all, all, we're all assholes. But, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I think our system, I think this is probably the, the danger of, of democracy, right? Like there, there's a danger to it. Like you, it's kind of like a gun. It can be a very, very powerful tool that can feed your family, protect your family. It can literally be used for a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. But it can also be the same thing that kills your entire family, right? In the wrong hands and not used with integrity and not knowing the system, being very familiar with the tool and all these things. And what I think the problem is right now is that we've got a bunch of people who aren't educated on how our system works, who aren't educated on, on it and, and the people who are going and they're putting into power, they're using this as some reality TV show or like they're betting on, on Sunday night football, right? It, it's, it's done with the mm. same mindset. And, and what happens is, is with democracy, it can be the best tool to give the, the freest country on the face of the planet, but it, it can be a system that implodes on itself and turns everybody against each other because there is so much freedom, right? Co communism is a more systematic, bureaucratic approach to something, right? Like mm. it's, it's, a, it's, it's regulated. It's kind of like the military. Communism is, is kind of like how the military could be, right? Or socialism. Socialism is the military socialism. Right? It's, yeah, for Pretty sure. Pretty much yeah. socialism. But when you have democracy and you have all this freedom and all this power, 
you put it in the wrong hands, it can be the same. The same thing that makes you free can also be the same thing that kills us. Right, it can. I mean, and that's why uh, there will never be a, a successful socialist country ever is because it inevitably turns to communism. Now, what we found about free market capitalism and things like that is it can thrive pretty well without that happening, without it turning to fascism, yes. for example, which is a far right ideology. But for some, I don't know if it's a corrective measure that society's taken or whatever, or if people are just weak, but it seems like the idea of individual responsibility has gone by the wayside for the but, most but part. There, right? But there is no, right. There is no accountability. Right. So like, we, we, like, you, you're, you are afforded in America, you're afforded the privilege. It's not a right because people had to fight for this shit. It is a privilege. Yeah. You're afforded the privilege of being able to live in a society like capitalism without the bullshit from a society like socialism or communism where people are telling you what to do all the time. That's what this is supposed to be. But if you continue to not pay attention to what's going on and to allow these what seem like simple comforts into your life at the time or maybe they're not bad enough to really go after we have to focus on this goal of making sure that individual liberty is the most important and well-respected facet of our entire system right otherwise we're fucked but 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 look look th this is what you're seeing across the board right now in our politics and and, and across the world or in, across the board of america um is the repercussions of taking the easy road look at the look at the baby boomers they were, they, they were the, probably one of the first generations that decided to become the victims mm -hmm. agreed or disagreed yeah. Yeah. right i mean there's there's and something about culture that when, so, once you become protected you start looking inward well, exactly right? and and so like they started they started that mindset and now their children started getting participation trophies right and now you look at the whole society that's voting right now Nobody wants to look in the mirror and say, hey, you know what? I fucking lost, so I need to go back and work on something. Right. No, we're a bunch of dull blades. We're a bunch of dull blades. Basically. We've never seen steel before. We've never been sharpened. But, but, but on the backside of it, the, the military that we have and the first responder community that we have is second to none, and it's provided the same, like we have empowered the problem. Right, because we've had men and women who've been willing to raise their right hands and didn't have to. Um, we've had people willing to go out and and protect our society and still stand up when it's not, you know, uh, popular in the court of public opinion. People have still been willing to do this, and they are we are basically enabling this behavior to continue. Right, we we got police protecting the same people who are saying fuck the police. Right. You know what I mean, and right. and so and there's no social cost to be paid. And the yes, and the pro, that, and the pro, is, that is a problem. And the problem is, is when there are no consequences to your actions. And I blame eighty percent of this on one one piece of America, and that's big tech. Big tech. Yeah, yeah, I, and I'm with you. Um, until these things become public utilities. Uh, it's going to get worse and worse and yes. worse. And, uh, and look, we saw it in this election where, I mean, shit, look, we've, uh, between this and Ross Patterson Revolution, I've done around 1,500 episodes of podcasts. I've never been censored before. Uh, we've, we've been shadow banned on this show, that show. Uh, I even had a social media post on Facebook that was shadow banned this morning. I, I did an election show. Um, and there's something that pops up on YouTube. If you say the word election now that says the AP has called the election for, for Joe Biden for more information yeah. on, on oh, this. Yeah. And it was pointed out to, by the listeners, and I was like... By the way, it's not in the AP's power to call an election or any other media outlet. It's only with the electors right. and the Federal Election Commission to do that. And that's not going to happen until at the earliest December 13th. And it, and it, yeah. run, and it by the way, so the underneath same. it um, on YouTube, if you're, if you're doing a video, um, it, it puts, it's got a website on it. Uh, cisa.gov mm. slash rumor control. I don't know if you guys know what this is. I, I clicked it um, and it says it's the National Risk Management um, mm. for Election Security. And, uh, and it says mis and dis disinformation can undermine public confidence in the electoral process as well in our democracy. A little late for that. Yeah. Way Sorry. late for that. Yeah, you, but, should have, you should have ran that ad 15 years ago. But, yeah. but they're doing it now, yeah. currently now, on videos on YouTube. 
and uh, it, it keeps getting scarier and scarier where you're just like, what, well, what the fuck is next then? Well, here's you know? what I don't like. I don't want, when any kind of private organization, and look, we, we all support private business here, but we have to be fucking pragmatists as well. When any private organization gets that powerful, then their voice becomes louder than yours. And when their voice becomes louder, the government has two choices, to listen to that voice or to develop a louder voice themselves. And the only way that government develops a louder voice is by taking voice away from the people. In both of these cases, mm -hmm. there is no good solution. But, but I don't know. There is. I'm, I disagree. There is a good solution with big tech. If I go buy a gun, a gun has to be registered to somebody's name. Right. It has to be. Yes. Right. So if I'm going to go and create an account on social media and use this platform that can be used to, to, to emotionally charge people and to, to, to mass you know, gather people to do something for a cause, that should have to be registered to somebody's name because why is that gun registered to somebody's name? To so hold them accountable. You're, so right. you're, what you're describing is basically the way telephones work, which is a public utility thing, and it makes sense. People you hear the word register, and yeah. that does not sit well with a lot okay. of folks. Okay, so it, it like... Because how much, how much power do we want the government to have? Well, do, we not, do we not want the capability to communicate with each other anonymously over no, the internet? It, it, we have that, to have that. That's not what I'm saying, though. That's not, that is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying the government has to be the one right. that, that... But who would it be, then? Well, you know what? If big tech, if I'm going to create a platform... And, and it's going to be my platform, mm -hmm. then if, if this account breaks the law, like they break the law that we already have set towards speech, if I look at you and I say, hey, Ross, I'm going to kill you. You can go call the cops right now and I'm going to jail because you have proof of it. Right. Right. So the same thing should be with the, the same shit as, as like as text messages. It should be the same thing with social media sites that if something is said that breaks the law, there should be no censorship decided from a private party. If this account breaks the law, then guess what? I come to you as your big tech. All you are is a vault. It has verified these people. That's your responsibility mm -hmm. as far as it goes to censorship. And I come to you and say, who is this account registered to? And then that person is held accountable for breaking the law. So instead of what uh, Section 230 does, which is basically absolve people of, or absolve tech companies of any illegal activity outside of their purview that may have happened on their platform, you would recommend something like uh, the tech companies just being complicit or compliant, rather, with the government prosecuting case. I understand that in yeah, principle. Absolutely. But imagine a government where AOC is in charge and she's making lists of people who have supported Trump over the Dude, last it's four all, years. But it's all, but, but I'm you saying, I mean? it's, but I'm saying I, it's already. I, I, I know I got it. I'm just playing devil's avocado here because. Uh, well, then that, then that goes back to the American people voting in people that they can trust that have that power. Yeah, but when have we done that? Who's the well, last fucking I mean, president then, that you then trusted? What we, then what do we do? I don't know. That's a I mean, good question. I, mean, I think we, we need an overhaul of this entire electoral well, system. Well, I mean, I, I, think, I think more the bigger problem to all this is, is that the fact that, honestly, this president's not going to change my, uh, our three lives here. This president's not going to make any decisions that's going to affect my life or change what I do every single day. Correct. Like, it's going to have absolutely... I don't invest in stocks, so I don't give a shit about that. I'll, I'll bet, I'll gamble on my own money. I'll go and I'll, I'll invest it in property or I'll do it like that. So that's going to be on my performance. Like this, this president is not going to affect, it's going to affect absolutely nothing of the future for me. Yeah, and I, I've said this uh, a bunch of times in the past where, you know, if you're this heated over a president, yeah. right, um, and it affects your life day to day, chances are you got bigger problems. Right, because look, you're probably living off the government. Yeah. Well, you say that, yes. but I mean, like, let's think about our position specifically. Okay, mm -hmm. we're all business owners, yep. mm -hmm. right? If I decide to sell my business today, mm -hmm. then I pay 15% capital gains tax on it, and the rest is mine. Right, mm -hmm. right. In four months, there's a decent chance, at least, that that's going to be 23%. Yes, right. Yes, that affects my life. It, it, it does. Um, but, but Your day-to-day -day And the idea that Biden and his team are currently floating the idea that they're going to make mask wearing mandatory nationwide. I mean, I mean at the end. Not that they have the constitutional authority to do anything like that. Sure. But the fact that they've been talking about it, then yeah, I mean. It's already you, there. You can say whatever the fuck you want about Trump and how he sounds dictatorial sometimes because he's, a, he's just an idiot that's negotiating in public and doesn't realize the weight of the words he says. It doesn't make it right. But it does shed some light on why he would do something like that. He's not doing those things to be malicious. He's just doing it because he's a fucking emotional child. And that's how he's learned to negotiate over the years. And sometimes it's pretty goddamn effective, frankly. But even if it wasn't, it's just a, it's a strategy. It's not, it's not who he is at the core of his, of his person. So when I see people 
who at the core of their character are arguing for these certain things. Like, I'm going to be the champion of, of social justice now, despite the fact that I wrote the bill that put all these men in prison and that my fucking vice president uh, uh, enforced that bill at the, in the biggest state in the country and suppressed evidence to keep people in prison and things like that. That should be a, a, an awakening, right? Yeah, but, but, but to your point, it hasn't happened yet. No, Therefore, I don't think it will. I, it's, it's same. You, you, but so after, like, after, after Hillary losing, maybe there was some chance if Biden had lost here that that would have happened. But now that Biden won, we're looking at another probably 20 years of just constant no. fracture of the Democratic Party. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, look the Democrats lost it, it, no matter how you look at it, right? Like They, mm -hmm. they lost seats in the House. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, if, if the Democrats don't go back and say, uh, you know, <laughs> we barely like like Donald Trump got beat. We didn't win. Um, kind of like the Republicans probably should have done as well last, you know, last time. Um, I mean, both of them have got to have a, a major overhaul. But but here's what I got to tell you is, is well, the I, Republicans did do it. They came back out of losing to Obama for a second time with Mitt, against Mitt Romney, and they came out with Donald Trump and won. Well, I, so, right. So, so I, I got like you. They, they, they made the adjustment. But they I also didn't. think that was an accident. I also think that that was as much... I, 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 think I don't it was think more, the RNC wanted that to happen. Well, well, no, they stretch. definitely did not well, want no. that but, to happen, uh, yeah. But, but so my, my thing to you is, look, is, okay, let's say as soon as whatever happens, the, the judicial system comes out and, and decides whoever president is, either mm -hmm. way, if it is Joe Biden, which I, I, I truly believe at this point, it's, the election's over. Um, we have got to stop talking about what they've done before, and we've just got to hope for the, the, the hope for the goodness of this nation that they come out and have learned from the mistakes and that they're going to do better over the next four years. That's all we can do. Like, if we don't do that, then we are just as bad as the left. Like, we're just as bad as, the, you know what I mean? Like, We've got to hope that. Well, I, how do you how do you balance that though? How do you decide what to support and what not to support? For example, well, how do you um, how do you, how do you pick? How do you decide like what you know? How do you decide like when Donald Trump does something? I mean, you know, you got to forgive him for the shit, the crazy. No, I know, I, I got all that. Yeah, for sure. But like, how do you? What, what's the line here? If if the if the Democrats if the Democrats win, and which, which it seems to be mm -hmm. the case. We'll see how much voter fraud. We know there's a lot of voter fraud. We don't know how much and if, or if it'll be uh, enough to swing anything. But <clears throat> anyways, it seems like they're going to win if they win. Um, there are things that these guys have talked about that are untenable for the American economy. You're right. Like and, and shutting down. I'm not a fan of fracking. I'm not a fan of long oil pipelines because they pre present unnecessary environmental challenges. That to me is laziness. We could figure out a better way to do it. We just haven't put the effort towards it. We put the effort towards and the money towards nonsensical fucking energy uh, substitutions that are not feasible at this yeah. period in time. We haven't figured out better ways to do what we're doing already. We're just trying to find out new ways, which is stupid. But anyways, aside from stuff like that, the Green New Deal that, that Kamala Harris was a co-author of, right? Mm -hmm that Biden says, oh, no, 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 but look, he's supported it in theory, right, in the past. And, and uh, all this other stuff that's come with that party, I want the country to succeed. Okay. So, and this is, this is a good learning lesson for, for conservatives right now because from the perspective of a liberal Democrat in 2016, in November of, la of 2016, they have a set of core beliefs that they think are going to make this country the best it could be. Trump was the complete opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And their response was to just lose their fucking minds. Right? Now, that isn't always the case. So, let's say you're riding a train through the city. Like, mm -hmm. you're on the wrong line, but then you look at the map, and well, I can go up two more and then swap over. This train is still moving generally in the direction you need it to move. So how do I fucking guide this thing the best I can well, or make hope. adjustments well, in the meantime? Because, but there is a line though, right? Like if they start talking about Green New Deal or, or nationwide mandating of certain things that it's unconstitutional, yeah. that's going to be a fucking problem for a lot of people. Man. Yeah. But, but let, look, let, let's, let's don't take an aspirin before we got a headache, right? Like let's start this off with the best mindset. Like we don't need this emotionally charged. Like we don't need to, 
Like, look, let's let's don't be the same thing that we just bitched about the last four years. Well, you know it's hard. I, mean? like, I, I get what you're saying, I, but I, I it's hard. What, it's hard not to do that when AOC and her colleagues are talking about making lists of people can, who support Trump. I was not a sub, Trump supporter. I, I got right? it, I and got I'm it. and I'm not, and I'm obviously not an AOC supporter either. But if either one of those sides started making lists of the other side. I'm going to have a fucking problem with that. And all of you should too, uh, by well, the way. A hundred, well, we're talking about big, we're talking about, di- we're talking about different issues, right? Like, well, we like are I, I, when I, the I, leaders of the party, like Michelle Obama as well is like these people, these 70 million people decided to vote for chaos and racism yeah, well, and blah, blah, blah. But, how about you shut the fuck up, well, Michelle? Well, how about I mean, that? I mean, listen, like she's one of the leaders, regardless of having never run for politics in her life, she's one of the leaders of the democratic party and her, what she says means a lot. Of, so she just called out 70 million people and told them that they're fucking racist. Like, how do you expect? All they talk about right now is, oh, we need to unify and stuff. Yeah, of course. You want to unify right now while you're winning in the game. You don't want there to be any more violence. I'm with you. Right? I, listen, I am with you. I, I, I am with you. But all we can hope is that over the next four years that, that we can at least lead by example, that we don't, we don't turn around and we don't grab guns and we don't go and we don't start you know, holding guns to where people can't count outside of voting centers. You know what I mean? Like, we, mm. like, like this is... I mean, I'm going to say on the backside of it, both sides are fucked up. Right. Right. So like, I'm just saying, as far as us, we have a responsibility. We have a platform. We have a responsibility to, to look, let's, okay. I got, we said we, we were in a fight, like we were in a fight. Uh, we said what we needed to, to get there, but it's time to like, Hey, like clean slate. Let's see what we're going to do going mm-hmm. forward. Like, let's see what we're going to do going forward. I'm going to reserve getting angry until the actual policies are, yeah. are in place. Well, let's and be things real, like though. That. Nothing like, is, unless it happens by executive order, nothing's going to happen. I, that's what I think, too. You've got a stalemate that's president too, for the next yeah. four years. Yeah, because this is, this is well, the first no, time. It's, it's going to be, it'll, yeah, for at least. At least four years. Well, well but two, this, years, Repu- two years. Re- no, Republicans are definitely going to flip the House in 2022 because th- let's just be real honest about what's going to happen. Even if anything Biden was going to push would have made some positive dent. He may, he may ride the wave from post-COVID and it lo- it'll inflate the way his numbers look the same way that Trump's looked after uh, yeah. Obama's policies brought us out of a recession. Let's be real about that. Sustaining it is important, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Biden probably won't be able to because we know how these policies work. But in 2022, he's gonna be, he'll be riding that downward wave and yeah. Republicans will take the House and we'll see what happens. I mean, Joe Biden is a statesman. He, he's a weird guy, sniffs people, very yeah. bizarre. Yeah. Um, but I'd sniff you. He's existed in D.C., which is a fucking uh, a hornet's nest for 50 years, mm-hmm. which is in itself impressive. I think it's wrong that we have people to serve that long, mm-hmm. but it's impressive to be able to stay, keep your head above water for that amount of time. But, so he's going to adjust, I think. The problem is not him. The problem is Kamala Harris. Well, uh, right? well I, I, I got you. And look, and all, all I can look, here's, here's our best, in my opinion, uh, best case scenario if Biden wins. Is that Biden lives another four years and can stay like we don't want him. We don't want Kamala Harris going being able to take over. I mean, she won't. What, but, what, what would even happen? The what, Senate doesn't the Senate have to confirm a new VP. So they probably wouldn't even have a VP for the last two years. If it but, happened, I mean, but what I hope is, is I hope if anything, if anything, this next four years, like obviously they probably won't pass much. They probably won't change much. We, we, I think we know that. But man, my hope for this country is, is that if he does anything that he can at least let America calm down. Like, so like we are so emotionally charged right now and look, and I'm going to, I'm going to put a lot of that on Donald Trump. Like it, he has emotionally exhausted us as a nation that everything has to be a fight. Well, I don't and know if it's, I, I don't and, know. And, if it, and, I, and I got, I got, it's I don't both think it's, sides. All, I don't think it's all him to blame though. I don't think it's all him to blame. He challenged the establishment so much that yep. they came out and said, everything he does is, is racist or sexist or whatever the I fuck got else. You, but Not I think he, he could, but I think he things. could have handled it a little bit different. Yeah, but he never would have. He's Donald well, Trump, right? So like there's no, so, he doesn't have that in his toolbox. So, so that's so my hope is, is that Biden will at least, at least, you know, take it down a notch of calming, like, you know what I mean? Of not charging of doing some of this dirty fighting behind, cl- like imagine well, if that he- you can, you can, you can bet on, right? Yeah. Cause his, his statements are going to be very limited and very mm-hmm. shortened anyways. And somebody else will be running the Twitter feed. Well, imagine your household with your kids. If you're fighting with your wife in front of the kids, mm-hmm. like it's tension everywhere, right? Everybody's walking on eggshells and this and that, like hopefully they can act as adults. It does put a little pressure on you, particularly as a man, I think. Yes. But maybe even so as a woman in, in Congress or the Senate to respond aggressively if you're spoken to aggressively because it appears weak, right? Well, I mean, imagine a cop walking up and saying, 
hey, motherfucker, what are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Like, you're, you're not going to sit here and be like, oh, well, sir. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm minding my goddamn business. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Uh, last but not least here, I wanted, to, I wanted to chat with you guys about the, uh, the COVID miracle that happened today. <laughs> um, what a coincidence. Seven, I mean, just the, you know, they couldn't uh, release that seven days ago, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, on the day after, uh, the Monday after uh, Biden and Harris get elected, a Pfizer comes out, um, which is what Donald Trump gave all the money to and says, hey, man, uh, we have it. We've got the cure. And, it's, uh, and we're 90% right now. We're going to have about 50 million of these guys out, out into the world in January. I, to me, because Dan rails on this all the time, that Big Pharma is always in bed with Democrats. This was a big fat fuck you yep. from Big Pharma to Donald Trump saying, eh. Well, he's the only one that's taken them to court trying to get drug prices lowered. He's the only one trying to have mm-hmm. uh, these other bargaining schedules that you can buy drugs from and stuff like that. He's definitely taken them on and they made him pay for it. And he took on big tech and they made him pay for that too. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, let's be real about this. The yeah. reason Donald Trump didn't get reelected isn't because people don't like the way he talks. Right. Because, because he took everybody to task. Because when we come on this show and talk the way we talk, we get more viewers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The more authentic we are, the more viewers we get. And he is, there's no more authentic American than Donald Trump. Let's be real, for better or worse. Yeah, right? yeah, no. Fact. Like he, for, for at least who he is. He guy, never held back. Like a fucking, a dude from, from New York that's got a fucking attitude about him, but he's also been successful. Of course, he's going to get an even bigger attitude. Blah, blah, blah. Now he's in his 70s and the billionaire. How the fuck do you think he's going to act? Yeah. Right. It's, it made perfect sense. However, uh, that, all that stuff, his personality, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe people voted against no. Trump because he's coarse when he speaks. I think it's, a, a coordinated effort from all these very look if if the pharmaceutical industry that's been trying to butt fuck you for years and is very successful in doing so since 83 percent of all privately filed bankruptcies are filed because of unpaid medical expenses and tech companies who we know have done everything they can to go out of their way to exploit our data and sell that information off to people do you think either one of those people are working for your best interest right now there's no fucking way right no so no. that that's why it always brings me back to this same conclusion. I'm not a Trump supporter. However, it would have been a lot better for the country had he been reelected for, and for a lot of different reasons. And I think it was one hour. <laughs> this, let me just double down on this. Yeah. It was one hour after the U.S. stated that they had the coronavirus uh, vaccine that Russia announced it, that they had it too. 90% effective one hour afterwards. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. I have a feeling you guys will be chatting about this on American Party here this week. Yeah, for sure. Uh, by the way, if, if you uh, have not subscribed, uh, go to uh, your favorite podcasting hosting sites and subscribe to American Party. Uh, and if you go to iTunes, write a, a quick review uh, as, as, long as, uh, as well as a five-star review. Um, and uh, do the same for Drinking Bros as well. Now's the point of the show. We get to the Drinking Bro of the week. Um, this one comes from Matty Bouchard. Big fan of that name from Alberta. Uh, he's been a member of Drinking Bros since the very beginning, and he's nominating Master Gunnery Sergeant Leighton Tex Bouchard. Uh, he says, I'm a first time caller, long time listener. Remembrance Day is upon us here in the frozen tundra of Canada, and I'd like to nominate my old man. I am the fourth generation of my family to deploy overseas. My dad was a Canadian who went south to join the Marines. He served from 65 to 69 and was in Vietnam for the majority of that time. Uh, He then did a small stint with the CND Reserves, uh, but was asked to tone down his training. He took a training platoon and captured all of the regiment's uh, officer in ambush of their CP. Sadly, he was killed uh, in an accident and didn't get to see me off on my tour to Iraq. He loved the Corps with all his heart, and he would have loved everything about you guys. Sorry for the long-winded story. Uh, if you guys could also give me and the boys a shout-out, that would be really dope. I'm going to need help with this one here. One P-P-C-L-I a coy. You know what that means. Say it again. One P-P-C-L-I-A-C-O-Y. Um, and then it says Red Devils afterwards. That is the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. One P-P-C-L-I. That's his unit. Ah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They there name all their units after actual uh, 
world royalty since they're still technically part of not the United Kingdom. But what's the other one? The United whatever the fuck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fuck. right. I can't remember the other name of it. But there's one where it's just the places they still own, quote unquote. And yeah. The other one is the protectorates and shit like that. It's funny, man. My um, I, like. By the way, we do really read these at random. Like whenever they show up, we read them live on air, and that's yeah. it. We don't pre-screen these. And uh, Mike Sorelli earlier was talking about. How he always goes up to Canada for, for Remembrance Day. Yeah, what are the chances that this is the one we open live well, on air? They apparently do a little bit better taking care of their uh, veterans up there. Apparently, man. Uh, but cheers. Cheers to you, Maddie. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, you guys at home can submit the uh, Drinking Bro of the Week to drinkingbros.com. Um, we, again, we read these live on air. We don't screen any of them. So wherever it pops up, it pops up. And while you're there, you can get some buttery soft teas for $19.99 at Drinking Bros. Uh, Dakota, I, we appreciate you joining us for the second half here. Thanks so uh, much Looking for forward me. to uh, American Party this week. Again, subscribe uh, to iTunes. Uh, and the video is on Drinking Bros Podcast. Uh, you guys have been killing it, man. And uh, it's, a, it's a fun show. We enjoy it. Uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, Dakota Meyer, I'm Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>